Using our CAD, we shall show you how the SAP is made on the whole. As you can see, this is the SAP architecture. Closing in on the first block, that is uh, the program counter, if we right click and descend hierarchy, what we see inside the block is 474LS107s, which is a dual JK flip flop with individual JK, direct clear, and clock pulse inputs. Now the output changes are initiated by the high to low transition of the clock. The output of the JK flip-flops is controlled with the use of 74LS126 which is a tri-state buffer with outputs high and low. If the buffer is disabled the output will be high Z. We right click and uh, ascend hierarchy. Moving into the next block, that is the MAR, Memory Address Register. Now the MAR block consists of the 74LS173, which is a 4-bit D-type register with 3-state outputs. It is also known as a 4-bit buffer register. The pins 1 and 2 of the register are ground. Coming to the RAM. Now the RAM that is used here is a simple 8K into 8 from the PSPICE library. Coming to the instruction register, it has two 74LS173s which are 4-bit D-type register with tri-state outputs. It is changed into a two-state output I7, I6, I5, I4 by grounding pins 1 and 2 of the higher chip. This nibble goes to the instruction decoder in the controller sequencer. Signal EI bar controls the output of the lower nibble in the instruction register. When EI is low, this nibble is placed on the W bus. Now the controller sequencer can be further subdivided into smaller blocks. These are the instruction decoder, the ring counter and the control matrix. Picking up the first part, that is the instruction decoder, it consists of the 7404s which produce complements of the opcode bits I7, I6, I5, I4. The 74LS20s, which are 4 input NAND gates, decode the opcode to produce 5 output signals, LDA that stands for load, add, sub, out and hop. Also important is the fact that only one of these is active at a time. Moving to the ring counter. The ring counter, also called the state counter, consists of six 74LS107s, which are dual JK flip-flops. This counter is reset when the S5 switch is pressed. The Q0 flip-flop is inverted so that the Q bar output, pin 6, drives the J input of the Q1 flip-flop. Because of this, the T1 output is initially high. The clock signal drives an active low input. This means that the negative edge of the clock signal initiates each T-state. Half a cycle later, the positive edge of the clock signal produces register loading. Moving on to the last part of the controller sequencer is the control matrix. Now the LDAs add, sub and out from the instruction decoder drive the control matrix. At the same time the ring counter signals T1 to T6 are also driving the matrix. Now the matrix produces Convert, a 12-bit micro instruction that tells the rest of the microprocessor what to do. Moving on to the next block, that is the accumulator, we again use two 74LS173s and the output of which is connected by tri-state buffers using 74LS126. The W bus comes in the buffers. The next block after the accumulator is the adder subtractor. It consists of two 74LS83s and 74LS86. The 74LS86 are exclusive OR gates which act as a controlled inverter. When SU is low, the contents of the B register are transmitted. When SU is high, the 1 complement is transmitted and a 1 is added to the LSB to form the 2's complement. 
The 74 LS83s are 4-bit full adders combined to form an 8-bit sum or difference. The 74 LS126s convert this 8-bit answer into a 3-state output for driving the W bus. Now both the B and the output register are very much similar. They consist of 74 LS173s. The B register contains data to be added or subtracted from the accumulator. Grounding pins 1 and 2 of both the 74 LS 173s of the B register produces a two state output for the adder subtractor. While the 74 LS 173s of the output register drives the binary display, enabling the processed data to be viewed.